In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the 2022.9 update for Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Update 2022.9 is full of new UI and UX changes, as well as a bunch of other new features that I know a lot of you are going to love. So let's kick this off with the first feature, which I think is going to be a fan favorite, and it's the new changes to the Automation Editor UI. The Automation Editor has received a massive lick of paint. Everything feels new and fresh, and everything's really small and concise, and this whole minimalistic look just makes it a lot easier to actually understand and visualize what's going on with an automation. You can now clearly see a breakdown of the three individual sections that build up an automation, and everything that's actually on the screen is all the information you need. No longer do we have those big bulky text descriptions littered around the screen, but what we now have are small individual links and also these little help bubbles, and they link off to the various bits of the Home Assistant documentation that tell you exactly what that piece of the automation editor does. Another really cool feature that's been added to the automation editor is triggers, conditions and automations now automatically name themselves based on the parameters or options you set on them. It's not possible for every single outcome, but the majority of the time it's going to automatically assign itself a name that's going to be something related to what you're doing. This helps to keep your automations really tidy and really well documented, as you can just read that line to actually see what's going to be going on. And if you take a look at this really simple automation, just by looking at those three points there, it's really easy to see what's actually going to happen with this automation. So when I arrive home and it's after sunset, this light's going to turn on. And just without actually seeing any of the code or any of the UI bits that are needed there, you can just read those things and clearly identify what's going to happen. And if you're not happy with these names that have been assigned to the various parts of your automation, you can just select the three dots in the corner here. You then can simply just select rename. And from here, you can just assign whatever name or description you want to the relevant piece of your automation. The final change that I'm just going to quickly touch on for the automation editor are the fact that states can now automatically autofill. Here in my example, normally we'd have to remember what the various different states were or we'd have to look them up. So normally here I'd have to type home out or I'd have to type away or figure out what any of the other optional states could be. But now I can just simply select it and it's going to present me with all of those different states. And what is really cool about this one is this will work for any entity in any state. So they'll now just automatically populate when you're using the UI. So you're no longer going to have to spend ages figuring out what all the possible states are or figuring out what they can change to. You can just simply select them now from a drop down list. If you're a long time Home Assistant user, then one thing you will have to relearn is your muscle memory for actually creating and modifying your conditions, actions and triggers. To actually change the type, you will actually now need to delete this whole block as opposed to just changing the actual type at the top. Now this is only a really small thing and again, it's something you're just going to learn with muscle memory, but that's one thing you'll have to just remember to do. Moving on to our second feature then, we've got a brand new helper entity, the schedule. Within helpers now you'll find this new option for a schedule and a schedule allows you to pretty much do exactly that, it allows you to build up a schedule. Using the UI you're able to easily select time and days that you'd like to book scheduled slots and if the time falls in between one of those slots the entity is going to be on and if it's outside of those slots it's going to be off. Using this new helper entity is going to be great for setting up those automations that always occur on the same days and times, week by week. It's important to note as well that with this schedule entity, it's only possible to set a week by week with reoccurring events. You're not able to set individual days and times for specific dates. I do believe that something's in the works for that with a proper kind of calendar schedule. But for now, this is just a basic schedule that's going to help you with those automations that I mentioned. If you're familiar with Node Red's calendar, then it's a similar kind of concept. You can click individual days and times in little slots or you can drag for multiple slots and then you can simply click them again to remove them. Carrying on with our third feature and it's the ability to now visualize our processor and memory usage all within the hardware tab. This feature was previously mentioned when the new hardware tab was added but it's now been added as a full feature and we can now visualize our processor and memory usage. And what's cool about this is it will work for any machine that's running Home Assistant. It's not just tied to the Home Assistant blue or the yellow. So here in this one, I'm running this on just a generic image and I can actually also see the stats for this particular box. Continuing with my penultimate feature and it's another big feature of this update, which just like the last update, it's Bluetooth. Once again, Bluetooth has received a lot of love in Home Assistant and the devices that were previously added as supported Bluetooth devices are now even more reliable than they were before. 
It's not quite 100% perfect yet, and there is still a few reliability issues, but it is definitely getting there. Those changes to the Bluetooth performance and the Bluetooth reliability are just a small part of this big Bluetooth change. In fact, there's been a ton of Bluetooth work done, and we've had things like Bluetooth Home, Bluetooth Proxies, and now you can even add multiple Bluetooth adapters to your Home Assistant box, if that's something you wanted to do. I think Bluetooth Home and Bluetooth Proxies are going to be really big features for Home Assistant and it's going to be interesting to see where they go with the developments. If you'd like to know a little bit more about both of these features, I'll leave links to them in the description below. Wrapping this all up then, we've got my fifth and final feature and it's a new integration for the Fully Kiosk browser. Previously, to set up the Fully Kiosk integration, you'd have to do this through the Home Assistant Community Store, but it's now finally available as a standard Home Assistant integration. This one's one of the smaller features, but this is personally an integration that I make use of every day. So with the fully kiosk browser, it allows you to control some of the kiosk settings that you'd have to do through the web interface, and you can automate them and control them all with Home Assistant. So you can do things like have your tablet turn its screen on at certain times of the day, you can adjust the motion settings, and you can also adjust what's actually on the screen. If you're making use of the fully kiosk browser and you've never seen or heard of this integration, then I'd highly recommend checking it out. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five of the new features coming in 2022.9 that I really like. If you have enjoyed the video, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes, these awesome dudes are my Patreons, if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create videos like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you're looking for a fun Home Assistant project to sink your teeth into, then check out this video just here. In that one, I show you how to build your own Raspberry Pi kiosk to actually control Home Assistant. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.